Oh, man. It's been a long season. But we made it through. Can't believe we made it up top the NFC. It's ridiculous, man. Can't believe I also broke the record. 27 touchdown catches? Damn, man, that's crazy. Playoff time is here. Got to get my mind off of things. Let me see what's playing on the radio real quick. And shout out all my boss, bitches, wife, and niggas. Make sure you Welcome back to ESPN Radio, where we have the top news of every NFL team. And the playoff is here, Rich. Yes, the playoff is here. We got some pretty exciting games, but a team that I would like to talk about is the St. Louis Rams. Unfortunately, I know they are the best team in the NFC this year, but I don't think they have what it takes to take it all the way and win the Super Bowl. You know what, Rich? I kind of have to agree with you. Their defense is, mm, they were ranked number 20th in the league. Their offense, they do have a high-powered offense, but if you stop the passing game, you know, then they have to rely on their running game. And let me tell you something, Trey Mason is just not getting the job done. And I do think that, you know, yeah, they had a pretty good regular season, but in the playoffs, they will choke. Choke in the playoffs? We'll see about that. We'll see. Damn, man, can you guys believe that? Can you guys believe how many people are doubting Escobar Sanchez and the St. Louis Rams? Like, this is crazy. We went 13-3 in the regular season. We made it up top the NFC West and also the NFC Conference, and people are still doubting us. They don't think that we are the top team in the NFL. That's crazy. That's crazy. Most people are saying that we will choke. That is ridiculous. That's a total slap to the face to Escobar Sanchez, to St. Louis, to the organization, to the whole, to the whole state of Missouri. That's just a whole slap across the face. But as you guys know, we are in playoff time. This is when the game actually counts. This is when we have to give it all on the line. And as you see, fucking Nick Foles won MVP in the NFL. How? How? This dude had 37 interceptions, it seemed like. But I came in seventh in MVP racing. And Jeff Fisher did win Coach of the Year. Well deserved. You see, looking at the NFL records, I almost broke the record for most for most yards in a season, which is pretty dope shit. But you know, I made up for it by having the most ever receiving touchdowns in a season with 27. Next up is Randy Moss with 23 and Jerry Rice at 22. But here are the schedules for the divisional round. You have the Bills and the Bengals, the Cowboys at Carolina. The Patriots at coast and the Seahawks versus the Giants. So pretty, pretty good key matchups. But as you see, as we go ahead into the divisional round, we end up playing the New York Giants. Am I afraid of the New York Giants? Hell fucking no. Hell no. But what I am afraid is the fact that who they beat and how they beat them. Now, if you saw and paid attention to the key matchups to the division around, you would know that the Giants went up against the Seattle Seahawks and they won. And how they won was by scoring 40 points. I'm not scared about the Giants defense, but I am scared about their offense because the Rams defense apparently isn't that great. But here we are. And you see, I got the spotlight on Odell Beckham. He might have a hell of a day against the lackluster St. Louis Rams secondary. There goes Tom Coughlin. The man. The G-Men. You see the other matchup, Carolina against Green Bay Packers. I hope Carolina does win that because, you know, <coughs> Carolina Panther fan here. But we're just going to jump right into the gameplay, into the first quarter. The false to Escobar Sanchez connection is already starting. As Nick Foles fires a strike to Escobar, who takes it for 17. Well, more than a 17-yard game, but it was a 17 run after the catch. We weren't able to do much in that drive, but we do settle for three points. So we do strike first blood, and we do get the ball back. Same score, 
And again, Nick Foles is going to his old reliable Escobar Sanchez. And Nick Foles is 7 for 7 in this game. And that's Escobar's third reception of the game. And on the third and 10, why not throw it to the top wide receiver in the league this year? Kesu Mukamura just got mossed out of his asshole. Pause. So on until the second quarter, the score is 10 to seven. Nick Foles tries to drop back in the pocket, but he fumbles the ball. The Giants return it all the way to the one yard line. So the Giants do score off of that turnover. And we get the ball back with a little bit left in the first half. So of course we're trying to score and there goes a two minute warning. Both coaches are trying to establish their game plan. Look at Nick Foles and Jeff Fisher trying to create a master plan. But we weren't able to score a touchdown. But three points is better than no points. He cut the lead down to one. So on to the second half, Nick Foles rolls out the pocket and is forced to throw the ball away. But watch Prince of Mukamura try to talk smack to Escobar. Oh no! Oh my god! These two have been going at it all game. And Prince is probably getting the best of Escobar, but Escobar, it, that, that made him get hyped. That just hyped him up. You don't talk smack to Escobar. Unless you're able to do that. Rodgers come Marty, knocks the ball out of Escobar's hands. But still, that act that Prince did on Escobar, talking smack to him, that really lit a fire under Escobar. Not only did a little fire into him, but also lit a fire on Stedman Bailey and the Rams, who catches that TD pass, cutting the lead down to two. So on to the two-point conversion, running the stick play. Stedman Bailey was wide open again. are at a tied game folks well not anymore the Giants were able to score it's 28 to 21 but Nick Foles is going deep up top to Escobar yeah remember that time when Chris Mukamura was talking smack he's not saying nothing now Later on that drive, on the second and 10, Nick Foles gets brought down. And he's injured. Nick Foles injury doesn't appear to be anything too But he does get back into the game and throws a strike, a TD strike, to the one and only Jared Cook. First touchdown of the game. Not only that, it also brings us back. Tying the game to 28 all. A tie game in the fourth quarter thanks to that touchdown. Yeah, they call this crunch time. That's because it's time to get it done with it coming out of the two minute warning here in the final quarter. So for some reason, some way, somehow, our defense did get a safety. We were able to get the ball back, drive the ball all the way down the field, and there goes another reception. For Escobar and on this very next play on third and goal Escobar with the TD catch his second of the game but play close play close attention to this replay I think his knee was down before he even crossed the goal line wow. 
Watch that. His knee was down before he even crossed the plane. That was a key miss by the referees. But nonetheless, for some reason, the Giants did not challenge the play. If they would have challenged, that touchdown would have been called back, but they did not. So that was a bad call by Tom Coughlin because we ended up winning the game 37 to 28. There were plenty of times where the Giants could have had taken the lead and ran away with it, but we played as a team, we fought back, we were in our home crowd, and we were able to get the win. Now we're moving on into the conference championship. But then you start to wonder, are the Rams defense elite enough? Is our team as a whole ready to take on whoever in the conference finals? I don't know who I don't know who we're gonna play in the conference finals, but all I know, all I know is that our defense has to step up, our running game has to get better. Nick Foles didn't throw any interceptions this game, but there were times we were down in this game, and that's kind of scary. If you enjoyed the video, give the video a like. If you're new to each channel, do not forget to subscribe. Subscribe if you want to see who I'm playing next. But as always, folks, Escobar Sanchez don't like when you trash talk to him, all right? So don't trash talk to Escobar because he will get the better half of things. If you don't know, now you know. Just ask Prince of Mukamura. Peace! Damn, man.